All right, so in this video, we are going to go through a few more examples of these mole conversion problems. And again, the problems that I don't do, I'm going to expect you to do here. So we have this, we want to know, we want to know what is the mass in grams of the following. Well, I'm gonna do A here. And, and so we wanna know the mass in grams of 2.53 moles of lead to nitrate. Now, we always start out by writing what is given. So over here, I am gonna start out by writing 2.50 moles of lead to nitrate. And to go from moles to grams, we need the molar mass, okay? So remember, if you think about our cross-canceling, the same unit needs to cross cancel or diagonal cancel. So we're gonna get moles of PbNO3. And it is okay to go from moles of PbNO3 to grams of PbNO3. Now, like I said, we need the molar mass. And you could do one of two things. You could go through the process of actually finding the molar mass or you can just Google it. And so what you do or what you would do if you found this on Google is you would find that this lead to nitrate has a molar mass of 331.22 grams per mole, okay? And so the number G grams is associated with this big number. And so for G grams, we need to put that up here. So we have 3 31.22 for every one mole. So to calculate the number of grams of lead to nitrate, all we need to do is take 2.5, take 2.5 and we need to uh, multiply it by 331.22. All right, so when we do that, we're going to round to three total digits, so we're gonna to round to 828 grams of lead to nitrate. So this right here, this equals 828 grams of PbNO3. Okay, I'm gonna need you to do B, problem B, and it's gonna be a very similar fashion here, but remember, the molar mass of magnesium bromide is different than what we had up top. All right, let's go to another example. So we wanna calculate the number of moles in each of the following samples. We have in this first problem, 3.75 grams of calcium carbide. So again, always start out by writing the given values in the problem. So we have 3.75 moles of calcium carbide and again what we do oh, need to make a mistake here this is 3.75 grams again always important to write down exactly what you're given so in this problem right here we need to cross cancel and we cross cancel our units so grams of calcium carbide will be on bottom moles of calcium carbide will be on top. Now, again, you could calculate the molar mass by doing it how I taught you, or you could Google it. I went ahead and I found out the molar mass of calcium carbide to be 64.10 grams per mole. Again, the big number is associated with G for grams. So I put 64.10 down here with grams, and that is for every one mole. So what I do here in this case, I'm gonna take 3.75 and divide it by 64.10. 3.75 divided by 64.10. I press enter. I'm gonna to round to a total of three, what I call significant digits. So your answer is gonna be 0 .0585. 0 .0585 moles of calcium carbide, okay? Now, I'm gonna expect you to do part B here of this problem. 
Remember, aluminum nitrate is a different compound. That means it's going to have a different molar mass. All right, so we'll transition here to the next page. We want to know the per, uh, percent composition of each of the following comp compounds, all right? So when we say this, we want to know the percent composition of everything involved in this particular uh, compound. So what we do is we first find the molar mass. So for manganese oxide, what we do here, we start out, and I would start out on the left-hand side. We write down manganese, and we write down oxygen. And we go to our periodic table to find out what is the molar mass of manganese. Well, the molar mass of manganese is 54.94 grams per mole. So we have 54.94 grams per mole. And we look at our chemical formula. We say, all right, well, how many MNs or manganese atoms do we have? We only have one, so we multiply this value by one. So we get 54.94 grams per mole contributed from our manganese. And then what we do here is the same thing for oxygen. So we find oxygen on the periodic table. The molar mass, when we round it, is 16.00 grams per mole. So 16.00 grams per mole. We multiply it by how many oxygen we have in our formula, which is one. And so that gives us a value of 16.00 grams per mole. Right, now what we need to do is we need to add, we need to add both of these values together. So we're gonna add 54.94 plus 16.00. And we get a value of 70.94 grams per moles, okay? 70.94 grams per mole. And that is our total molar mass of manganese oxide. Now to find the percent composition of each element, what we are going to do is we're gonna use this total uh, molar mass for the compound and we're gonna divide it by each of these numbers. So I'm gonna do this one at a time. The other thing that we have to remember with percent composition is we need to multiply this value here by 100 at the very end. So what we're going to do is we are going to divide both things by the molar mass, so 70.94 grams per mole. Then at the very end, we're gonna multiply everything by 100 and so we have this. All we need to do to find the percent composition is you take the total mass contributed. So manganese total contributed 54.94 grams per mole. We divide that by 70.94. We press enter. Now we need to express it as a percent so we multiply it at, by 100, okay? We press 100. And we're gonna to round to one decimal here. So 77.4%, 77.4% of this entire compound is composed of manganese ions. So we put 77.4% manganese. Now we do the same exact thing for oxygen. So we divide all oxygen contributed. In this case, it's only 16 by the molar mass of this compound, so 70.94 grams per mole. Now, at the end of this, what we're going to do is we're gonna multiply that value by 100, okay? So in our calculators, again, this is the total mass of oxygen contributed. So we have 16.00 divided by 70.94, we get a decimal number, we need to multiply it by 100, and so we get a value. When we round, 22.6% of this compound is oxygen. 22.6% is oxygen, and that would be the percent composition of each element involved. Now, it is very, very important that you divide the amount contributed total from each single element divided by that molar mass. So in our example here, 
it won't just be one carbon, it'll be three carbons you divide by the total molar mass. I want you to knock out B and C for these types of problems. Okay, so moving on here, we are going to our next set of problems, and this deals with empirical formulas. So empirical formula, remember, simplest whole number ratio. And so what we are going to do is we're gonna take this percent composition and we are going to write this formula. So what we do, remember, we take percent and we change it to grams. So instead of 94.07%, I'm gonna have 94.07 grams of sulfur, okay? And I'm not gonna have 5.93% hydrogen, I'm gonna have 5.93 grams of hydrogen. So then what I need to do, I'm gonna go each element at a time here. We are going to go from grams of this element, so grams of sulfur to moles. Remember, the molar mass is found on the periodic table, and so the molar mass of sulfur is 32.07 grams per mole. Again, grams per mole, so 32.07 grams per one mole is what we get here. We'll calculate the number of moles, so we have 94.07 divided by 32.07. And we can round to 2.93 moles. Whatever's in the calculator, we spit that exactly out. So 2.93 moles of S. We do the same exact thing for hydrogen. So grams needs to cancel on bottom, and we need to go to moles of hydrogen on top. So we look to the periodic table to find our molar mass. Hydrogen is the weird one. I like to have three decimals. So this rounds to 1.008 grams for every one mole. We plug these values into our calculator, so 5.93 divided by 1.008. We press enter. We get a value of 5.88. So that is 5.88 moles of H. Now, this is kind of the weird step. We ask ourselves, okay, 2.93 and 5.88. What is the smaller value? Well, the smaller value is that 2.93 so what we do here is this. We divide everything by 2.93. So 2.93 divided by itself is just one. So we have one mole of S. And then we take 5.88. So 5.88 divided by 2.93. And again, we get some decimals, but look how very, very close we are to two. It's okay in this step and in this step alone to write down two moles, okay? So we have two moles of H. Now, traditionally how I've said to write these formulas is whatever's listed first, you put down. So in this case, our empirical formula, our empirical formula is going to be this. You are going to have our S written there. We look to the value of number of moles to find our number of subscript. It is a one. And then we need H, and the problem says we have two of them. Now, you probably will find this as H2S, and that is a lot more common to find that as. But typically, again, you go in order that the percent composition is listed. So that's why I did that here. Again, most of the time here, you're gonna see this most commonly as H2S. So I'll write that down. So dot, 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 most commonly seen, commonly seen as H2S, okay? Oh, yep, and I forgot an extra N on my commonly. All right, so most commonly, most commonly is going to be H2S. All right, so I need you to do problem B there, 
and I will do a few more examples here. All right, so if we shift gears, if we shift gears, we get to our problem here. Um, so in this problem here, we have to go a little bit further here. So it says a 48.3 gram sample of aluminum iodide compound contains 3.2 grams of aluminum. We wanna know what is the empirical formula for the compound. Okay, so I'm going to write down this, 3.2 grams of Al, aluminum. Now, it does not list what the amount of iodine is, what the amount of iodine is, but, but what we can do is this. We can say, hey, if we had 48.30 grams to begin with, and 3.2 of that is aluminum, we subtract that value, 45.10 grams is going to be iodine. So that's how we find our iodine here. So 45.10 grams of I. Now, we go from grams to moles. So we cancel out our grams of aluminum and we go to moles of aluminum. The way we find that, the way we do that is via the periodic table. So aluminum, when you find that on the periodic table, has a molar mass of 26.98 grams per one mole. So 26.98 grams per one mole. And we calculate this in our calculator. So 3.20 divided by 26.98. And we get a value of 0.119. So 0 0.119 moles of Al. Now we do the same thing for iodine. We cancel out diagonally our grams of iodine and we go to moles of iodine. Now, how we find that molar mass is via the periodic table. We look here, the value of iodine is 126.90 grams per mole. So 126.90 grams per one mole. And we plug this into our calculator. So 45.10 divided by 126.90, we press enter. We get a value of 0.355, and that is moles of our iodine. Okay, now we look, we say 0.119 versus 0.355, and we ask ourselves which one is the smallest. Well, 0.119 is the smallest, so we divide everything by 0.119. Real easy, 0.119 divided by itself is one. So we get one mole of Al. And then with this one here, we take 0.355 divided by 0.119 and we press enter. Now, this right here, again, this is our very closeness. Like I said, once we get to this step and we're very, very close to a whole number, we can round this. So I'm gonna round this to three. This is three moles of iodine. So our empirical formula, our empirical formula becomes this. We write down the first thing that's listed, Al. We ask ourselves, the number of moles equals our subscript. So one, we leave it blank. Then we write down our second element, I. We see how many moles we have. We have three, so that means we need to put three as our subscript, and that becomes our value for our empirical formula. All right, one more problem I'm gonna show you here, and then I'm gonna want you to do number seven all on your own, all right? So number seven is gonna be all on your own, but I'm gonna do six with you. All right, so we have a hydrated compound. It's a 50.00 gram sample of hydrated manganese chloride yielding 31.75 grams of anhydrous compound after heating. We wanna determine the chemical formula and we wanna name the hydrate. So the first thing that we have here is this, manganese chloride. 
manganese chloride to help us out here has the formula of MnCl2, okay? Now, because it's a hydrate, remember, it's gonna have this dot and it's gonna have some waters attached to it. We don't know what the amount of waters are. So this X that I wrote down is gonna be what we're trying to find. Now, to help you out, uh, I have the molar mass of manganese chloride. And that molar mass of manganese to chloride is 125, 125.84 grams per mole. And that will help us out a little bit down the road. Now what we need to figure out is how much anhydrous manganese chloride we have versus how much water we have, okay? So we start out with our sample mass of 50.00 grams of manganese 2 chloride hydrate compound. We subtract from this the amount of anhydrous compound, which is given here at 31, 31, it's given at 31, uh, 0.75 grams. So I'm going to put this 31.75 grams and out to the side here I'm going to say anhydrous anhydrous MnCl2. So when we do this subtraction when we do 50.00 minus 31.75 we get a value of 18.25. So 18.25 grams, what this is, is the amount of H2O that was driven off during this heating process. So now what we need to do is we need to figure out the number of moles of manganese chloride to the number of moles of water. So what we're going to do here, we're going to start out with 18.25, 18.25 grams of H2O. And what we're going to do here is we're going to convert to moles of H2O. So we're going to cancel out grams on bottom. We're going to go to the top and we're going to have moles of H2O on top. Now, to help you out here, and you can look this up, you can Google it, H2O has a molar mass of 18.02 grams per mole. So this 18.02 number goes on bottom, 18.02, and that is for every one mole. Okay, so what we do here is we take 18.25 divided by 18.02, and we get a value of 1.01, .01, and so that is 1.01 .01 moles of H2O. Now what we need to do is we need to see how many moles of anhydrous manganese 2 chloride we have. So we have this. We have 31.75 grams of MnCl2. We cancel our grams diagonal, so grams of MnCl2 to our moles of MnCl2. Now, grams per mole, I said we would use it. It's up here. So 125, 125.84 grams to every one mole. And then we go through this process here. So we have 31.75 divided by 125.84, and we get a value of 0.252. So 0.252. 2 moles of MnCl2. Now what we need to do is we need to find our ratio. Okay, So our ratio is always going to be moles of water. So in this case it's going to be 1.01 .01 moles H2O divided by our moles of anhydrous. Okay? So we're going to have 0.252 moles of our anhydrous, which is manganese 2 chloride. And 
we get this value, we get this, this number here, so 1.01 .01 divided by 0.252, and we can round, this round, see how close it is to four? This is really important, so I'm gonna use this whole number four. This right here, this four, is going to equal our x, okay? Now, we can write the formula of the hydrate. So our formula, our formula becomes this, and I'll put of the hydrate, becomes this. It becomes MnCl2. The x gets replaced by this four that we have just calculated, so this becomes dot four h 2 O's. Now, the name, the name of this particular hydrate is as follows. So I'm going to put name of hydrate. This right here is going to be manganese, mang, manganese, whoop, forgot my N manganese two I'm running out of, out of out of room here two chloride and all I did is I copied the name from up above right here and then we we turn to our periodic table packet and we ask ourselves this we say okay four is the number of waters so we need to put a prefix for four, which is tetra. So four prefix is tetra. So this would be tetra hydrate. All right, so that becomes our name and our formula. All right, so as I said here, I am going to expect you to do all of number seven start to finish. So number seven on this worksheet is going to be yours to do start to finish.